Today I'm looking at Sputnik 1. Sputnik 1 essentially started off the space race. Sputnik 1 apparently terrified the American public for three weeks with its beeping sound that could be heard. But when we look back at the origins of the space race, Sputnik 1 of course included, and we look at similar things going on at the time, we find something incredibly revealing regarding Sputnik 1 and the Russian space program. First up, we're going to pop back to 1957 and see the news reporting on Sputnik 1. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Here, an artist's conception of how the feat was accomplished. A three-stage rocket. Number one, the booster in the class of an intercontinental missile. Its weight estimated at 50 tons. The smaller second stage took over at 5,000 miles an hour and carried on to the highest point reached. 500 miles up, the artificial moon is boosted to a speed counterbalancing the pull of gravity and released. You are hearing the actual signals transmitted by the Earth-circling satellite. One of the great scientific feats of the age. Well, I absolutely love the old school propaganda. Love it. Anyway, right, we're over at Wiki. Sputnik crisis, okay? The Sputnik crisis was a period of public fear and anxiety in Western nations about the perceived technological gap between the United States and the Soviet Union, caused by the Soviet's launch of Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. The crisis was a significant event in the Cold War that triggered the creation of NASA and the space race between the two superpowers. The satellite was launched on October the 4th, 1957, okay? Now, this is where it gets really interesting. I'm at this article here, which is titled, Russia also has a fleet of spy balloons. I suspect this has come off the back of the Chinese spy balloon charade a few months ago. But this article is incredibly telling here with timelines and stuff, as we're about to see. With states here, balloons were an important component of the Soviet Union's arsenal for everything from spying to bombing, and Russia still uses them today. So we scroll down, we get a balloon. Aerostats, including unpowered balloons, were very popular in the Soviet Union before World War II, but subsequently fell almost completely out of favour. However, once the Cold War was underway, Soviet surveillance balloons made a comeback. In the modern Russian military, there remains a limited niche for these kinds of balloons. Although with spy balloons very much back on the international agenda, it's possible that they could become part of a broader resurgence. Interesting that when the Cold War era begun, that is the space race, essentially, Balloons came back in favour when the space race begun. Kind of telling. I suspect USSR, Russia and America, with their rocket tests, had realised by the mid-50s the limitations of the technology in which they hold and realised probably they were better off going back to Victorian technology, which is balloons. As we can see here, Cold War era, the start of the space race, balloons, bizarrely enough, are back in favour. You come down. Beginning in the mid-50s, thousands of free balloons drifted over the Warsaw Pact countries from the West. Many of them flew into the territory of the Soviet Union. This was the impetus for the creation of a series of special balloon intercepting aircraft. You can read more about it here. But it also spurred the Soviets to launch work on their own military balloons. Accordingly, in 1956, one year before the Sputnik, the first ever satellite, was launched. Remember this, 1956, the OKB-424 Design Bureau 
also known as the DKBA, was established especially for the task of making new military aerostats. How telling is that? One year before the first ever man-made satellite known as Sputnik 1, which kicks off the space race, one year before that, the Soviet Union start up their own military satellite balloon division. Kind of giving the game away there, lads. If you were going into the space race era, you'd be getting rid of any balloons that you had left. You certainly wouldn't start be starting up new balloon military divisions at the start of the space race. Unless, of course, you're faking your data and pushing the space narrative using balloons. So here's Sputnik 1, space satellite from 1957. And here's a high altitude Russian balloon from the 1930s. 1957, 1930s. Are you starting to get it? That's right, Sputnik 1 was a balloon. And then when we look at this map showing the wind direction, Russia on the left, America on the right, you can see how easy it would be to do this with balloons back in the day to get the space race started. Start launching your balloons in Russia, and let the wind do all the rest. Put some transmitters on your balloons and the propaganda will do the rest on the American public. They hear a few beeps on their ham radio and away you go. Based on the propaganda and a few beeps, the gullible general public will then therefore come to the ridiculous conclusion that there's some kind of satellite doing a ludicrous speed around a ball. War of the Worlds told them they could get away with his silliness. But as you can see, how easy it would be to do. The wind, once you've launched your balloons from Russia, the wind takes care of the rest. Now, if it's true, the official story that they were getting a beep every 90 or so minutes. Of course, the official story is that this spacecraft was doing ludicrous speeds around a ball and coming around every 90 minutes. If that is true, then I suspect Russia were launching a balloon every 90 or so minutes. OK. You wouldn't be starting up a military balloon division, which runs to this day at the start of the space race. If the space race was real. You start your military balloon division up to push the lie that is the space race. And of course you can get your data from your balloons and various other things. But to me, the timelines here tell me that Sputnik 1 was several balloons. The propaganda did the rest. Several balloons with a transmitter on. The propaganda did the rest. Crazy when you think about it. Balloons were the cause, the start of the space race. Wow. For any globe believers watching this desperately clinging on, thinking that this, what I'm showing you here, is from satellites. No, sorry to disappoint you. All the weather data we get comes from balloons. They send hundreds up daily all across the earth. The data comes back gets put through simulations and then gets put into a visual form for us to see like we're seeing here okay if there were satellites in space you wouldn't need the weather balloons literally hundreds upon hundreds launched daily twice a day you wouldn't need that if satellites were in space if satellites were in space you wouldn't need a military balloon division